So today, we are going to be discussing pricing strategy and a way for you to define the pricing strategy for your firm. And this, this approach, this approach to defining your pricing strategy is going to be customer driven. We're going to ask you to address three customer oriented questions, customer focused questions, three questions from the customer's perspective. And those three questions are number one, what's my alternative? Number two, are you better or worse? And number three, why should I Now we're asking each of these questions from the customer's perspective because let's face it, your firm exists to serve a customer need profitably. And if you can't serve a customer need profitably, you can't exist. The only reason why customers buy from you is because they need something. You help them either attain a goal or avoid a problem, overcome a problem that they have. And so you're trying to figure out what that need is that you solve, and that is the driver, the starting point for determining your pricing strategy. What is it, who is it that is my customer, and what needs will I solve for those customers? I mean, I can't please everybody, and I can't solve every need of a customer, but I can solve some needs of some people and that is my target market, and that is the focus of my pricing. Not to capture every customer, but to capture my target market profitably and delight them with a great offer. How are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna start by asking from the customer's perspective, if they didn't buy from you, what would they buy? What is their alternative? I mean, before your firm existed, before your firm offered a product or service, your customers had some means of accomplishing their goals. Well, what is that goal? What is those alternatives that they had for accomplishing those goals? Was it a direct competitor that could provide roughly a similar offering to you? Is it an indirect competitor that offers something different, but could in a roundabout way get them to the same place? What is that alternative? And why is this the starting point for a pricing question? Because your customers will start by comparing your offer to the alternative offer, whatever that alternative is. So by starting out by asking what is the alternative, we're focused on the issue of getting at the reference price that reference point that's inside their brain and saying, well, this is kind of what I expected. I don't see, I, that's what you need to think with. Is start thinking, well, if they didn't buy from you, what would they buy and what would they expect to pay for that product? That's the reference price. That's the price of the nearest comparable alternative. And if you don't like the terms direct and indirect competitors, we can use the economics terms of substitutes but the point is that there's always an alternative, even if that alternative is do nothing. The second question, also being asked from the customer's perspective, is are you better or are you worse in helping them accomplish their goals? I mean, this is pricing 101. You're pricing according to the value you put on the table. If you put more value on the table, you get to have a higher price. If you put less value on the table, you're stuck at a lower price. You price according to the value you deliver to customers. And so asking, are you better or are you worse? You're looking at the question of how much better are you in terms of quantity, quantitative figures, money, or how much worse are you, again, in terms of quantitative figures. Figures. And this, this is the logic, the logic of a solid pricing strategy. To understand what that alternative is and how much better, or possibly worse, you are in meeting that similar set of goals. That's the starting point for your pricing strategy. 
Both of those questions, however, are directly logical and straightforward. If you work in a business, you realize that your customers are not necessarily logical. And so we have to get to the third question, the emotional question, the psychological question, the why should I care question. I mean, let's face it, customers' emotions can override the logic of the deal. And sometimes the customer's emotions will make them buy things that are kind of useless, like a beanie baby. And other times the emotions will prevent them from buying something they should be buying, like health insurance or other things. And we need to make sure that our emotions in the offer are aligned with the logic, the rationality of our pricing structure, of our pricing strategy. So we need to align these two things, and we need to raise the question of why should a customer care? And we're not just like talking. These are like facts. They've put our brains in functional MRI machines and mapped where our frontal cortex, where our logic center is, making that logical trade-off in terms of offers, is connected to our emotional center in the center of our brain when we make trade-offs when we make purchase decisions. Our emotions and our logic actually communicate with each other in making a purchase decision. Every time somebody reaches for their wallet and starts to pull it out, that's an emotional reaction as much as it is a logical reaction. And if we don't align our emotions with our, with our rational offer, our emotional offer with our rational offer, then the two parts will compete with each other inside of the brains of the customer. And what happens when the emotions and the logic are not aligned? Well, the customer's confusion leads to nothing, no action, no purchase. And of course, no purchase means the, the price, uh, it doesn't matter what the price, it, it, you've lost. So you have to make sure you align that emotions, that emotional offer, with the logic, with the logical offer. And that third question drives you directly there. Now, fortunately, to some degree, you can influence the emotional perception of your offer. This can be influenced just as the logical part of your offer can be engineered to deliver value to customers by adding and subtracting features and choosing the general category that you're in, the alternative and how much better you are. Just as you can value engineer your product and therefore your ability to capture a profitable price, you can, to some degree, influence the emotional perception of your offer to help align the logic of the value with the emotion of the decision of purchase. So these, these are the three customer-driven pricing questions that can be used to drive your pricing strategy. What's my alternative? Are you better or worse? And why should I care? We can use these three pricing, customer-driven pricing questions when we are setting our prices, logically setting our prices, when we are managing price variances, either through couponing or you know, promotions or, or uh, discounts, those questions are trying to drive you into saying, well, what's different about that customer that makes them have a different price than this other customer? How do we price segment our customers according to the willingness to pay according to what their alternatives are, how much better or worse you are, and how well you can align your offer to their emotions. And you can use these three questions when you're thinking about your pricing structure, whether or not you're doing a two-part tariff or uh, unit pricing or the tiered pricing, versioning or bundling or subscriptions or software as a service or yield management or, or revenue. It doesn't matter what structure you choose. 
But when you're thinking about those structures, what you're trying to do is make sure that your pricing aligns with the variation in how customers perceive your offer in light of its alternatives. Your offer in terms of how much better it is than what else they could have for your target market. So I'm glad that you joined in on this. If you enjoyed this little talk, let me know. If you want to know more about pricing, or if you want to use Wiglaf pricing to help accomplish some goals, we'd be glad to help. Executives choose Wiglaf pricing to help define their organizational strategy for term, in terms of people, processes, and tools for executing a better pricing strategy. We help firms and price setting, discount management, price structures, and aligning the pricing strategy to the corporate strategy. Yes, we do deep dive analytics. We are very quantitative, although this talk is not quantitative. And number three, four, yes, we do public speaking and training. So if you want your team to know more about pricing, let's connect. Thank you, and have a great day.